on our platform, we've seen, we've seen, especially across anxiety and stress content, on some of those media starts, we've seen over a thousand percent increase. So it's clear that people are struggling, people are having a hard time, and whether it's people who were already experiencing those things or who were vulnerable and in a position to start experiencing those things when the pandemic began. Um, I've not, I don't know about you, I've not spoken to anybody yet who is completely relaxed about this whole thing. No. And I don't think we should be. I don't think it's appropriate in any way to be completely relaxed about it. Um, I was chatting with an ER doctor this morning and she was saying, like, and rightly so, kind of, it's absolutely appropriate for all of us to feel kind of anxious to some degree. You know, this, this pandemic potentially threatens not only our own health, but the health of the people around us. And of course, the stability of our life as we know it, whether we think of it in terms of social groups, work and everything else. So I think it's natural that everyone's going to experience a greater amount of stress, greater amount of anxiety. I think it's impacting a lot of people's sleep. We've seen a huge surge in the amount of mm. content people are using either to get to sleep or to get back to sleep in the middle of the night. Um, obviously with kids being at home and off school, um, we've seen a massive increase in, in the amount of people using sort of kids content and trying to find a way of how to bring a greater peace of mind and stability into children's life and also how to just bring a great sense of calm and harmony into a household when we're all squeezed together often in quite small spaces that can be you know that can be especially tricky so I think yeah the short answer is inevitably mm -hmm. mental health and mental health illness tends to increase during a crisis like this there's no way that it, it couldn't yeah for me the important thing is that people have access to the tools and services that they need and there's not this kind of assumption well it's just like this there's no point there's nothing i can do i think that's that's such a common feeling and so for us the big job has been getting it into the hands for free to the people who need it most and making sure that, that they know that there is something you can do about your mental health during a time like this. That's great, man. Can, can you talk about that too, a little bit about what Headspace has done with the subscriptions and how you're helping? Yeah, so we, um, we started out probably about three weeks ago, a month ago maybe. Um, so we made um, Headspace free for all healthcare professionals in the US. Um, and we had a relationship, or we built a relationship with, uh, with the NHS in the UK as well. Um, so it's about one, I think it's about 1.5 million healthcare professionals in the UK, about 5 million in the US. We made it free for every single educator um, in the US as well. Um, just aware of kind of how difficult that is for schools, for teachers, for student kind of classrooms right now. Um, so we had all that in place anyway. And then we were kind of like, okay, but what about the people who aren't? a teacher or aren't so we, we built our whole collection of content called weathering the storm we made it free on the app it includes content around stress anxiety sleep um, if you're at home and you can't get to the gym and you want to exercise there's mindful movement exercises there there's kids content so we kind of tried to create a world in which everybody could have access to the tools that they need right now 